Do 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 Hi everybody, my name is Steve Kazanewski. I'm an author and you are listening to Cause and Effect. Tonight we're going to be talking about soliciting reviews for your book or other property. Uh, so we've talked in previous episodes about you know how important it is to have reviews, what they do for you, how they can improve your standing in the Amazon algorithm, how they get more eyes on, so on and so forth. And uh, that soliciting reviews is a you know perfectly normal, perfectly legitimate um, you know method of boosting your reviews. Very different from uh, you know buying them or or using you know sock puppets to produce reviews, anything like that. Uh, so the long and the short of it is, you're going to provide a professional or semi-professional blogger, writer, you know newspaper, whatever, uh, with a copy of your book free. They're going to provide you with an honest review. There's no quid pro quo there. It's not a bribe. It's not a gift. It's just a totally professional arrangement. And uh, it, it benefits you both. It gets the traffic from your fans onto the blogger's site. It gets more eyes from the blogger's fans onto your book. And uh, it's, all, it's all good. You get you uh, good feedback and everything else. So this is a really important part of the process here. And uh, instead of beating a dead horse and going over why we're doing this any longer, let's jump right in. So the first thing that I suggest that you do is to create a uh, spreadsheet. Uh, you know, however you want to do this in Excel or on Word or whatever you're comfortable with. And basically, the reason why I suggest that you create a spreadsheet is because, first of all, you want to know who you have solicited already so that you don't solicit them twice. And I know that sounds like, oh, well, how could I forget someone? But believe me, once you have gone through 50 or 100 or 200 or however many you know, book review blogs or sites, you're going to start to forget which ones you've already talked to. And there have been a couple of times when I've sat down and been like, oh, hey, this would be a great you know, person to, to solicit. And, and I do a quick search on my spreadsheet and I find out I've already solicited them. It's a little bit easier than having to go back in your mail program, you know, assuming that you save all your mail and checking and seeing who you've sent it to, blah, 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 blah. So uh, this is – your mileage may vary, as with everything on this video tonight. Uh, but this is, I think, a pretty basic um, spreadsheet that will get you through the day. Um, so we're pretending here that I am querying my first novel – uh, Brainerd Jones, okay? And this is a horror mystery with some comedic elements. It could pass for urban fantasy in some circles. Uh, so there's a couple things going on there. So th there's a reason why I selected Brainerd Jones rather than, say, my, my second book, The Ghoul Archipelago, which is kind of straight horror. And that's so I can show you guys some more of what's going on here. So pretending that we're querying Brainerd Jones, okay? And the other reason why I say keep a spreadsheet is because you can just duplicate this and create another sheet here for your second novel and your third novel and so on and so forth and easily keep track and make sure that you're hitting all the reviewers that helped you out the first time, you know, maybe avoiding the ones that were problematic or didn't respond, you know, whatever. I do suggest that you contact everyone, you know, at least two or three times. But if you've contacted someone three times and they're not responding, they're probably never going to. In any case, I digress. This is a pretty basic uh, spreadsheet that's going to get you through the day. Uh, like I say, you do the number, the name of the reviewer, how you contacted them by email, the name of their blog, the actual URL to their blog, what kind of book they requested. So, you know, some folks will request Kindle copy, that's .mobi, Nook, that's .epub, or in some cases they may request a uh, hard, you know, a paperback or an audio book. Um, I do recommend you, you know, think about whether you're going to send a paperback because between the cost of, you know, even buying your author copy and shipping, you're going to be looking at eh, $15, let's say, for potentially a review. 
And I also would caution you against folks that ask you to gift the book on Amazon. And what gifting is is when you actually buy your book and then give it to someone, a lot of times that can be a scam. And what they're doing is they'll take your book, whatever it is, you know, two ninety nine, three ninety nine. They'll they'll take your gift and they'll immediately return it to Amazon for a three ninety nine credit. Uh, so I would I would caution generally against gifting. And again, I've done it once or twice, depending on whether you trust the person, whether you know the person. And I would generally caution against sending out paperbacks again, unless this is a great reviewer that you really want to get in good with, or you know, if you just you know feel like that. You or you're somewhat independently wealthy, and you can, you know, pay for all that kind of stuff. I would say the date you initially tried to contact them, when and if they got back to you, um, what they said, when they got back to you, and then when they actually followed through. So I'm also using a color code here. So here we see that the first reviewer got back to me. He said yes. I contacted him on the first. He said yes the next day took him a month to get through okay so when he did that I made him green and the second reviewer I contacted him the same day took him four days or three days to get back but he said no so they, he never had a follow through so I went and made him red he said no you know he's not gonna do it there's no point waiting for him to and then this guy is Amber um, I sent it to him he has not yet responded so, you know, it's likely he won't at this point, being as it's October in real life. I don't know when you're watching this video, but he's probably not going to respond to me. But, like I said, when you make that second round of, you know, uh, solicitations for your second book, maybe you'll query review or see again. Who knows? All right. So this is your basic spreadsheet. So the question is, where do you find these reviewers? There's a couple of methods. Uh, let's pull up your handy dandy web browser here. One method is you can go directly to Amazon, and if you go to this URL here, amazon.com slash review slash top dash reviewers, this is going to list the top reviewers in Amazon in the world. Okay? So this first page has the, the top 10 reviewers anywhere right now in the world right now. And you see it goes from 1 to 1,000. So there's 10,000 people here. So the higher the number, um, some people actually make their livings reviewing things on Amazon. Uh, and even if they don't, they're certainly being solicited constantly. So someone like Ali Julia, who's number one, I don't know her. Uh, Jim Chambers, I've, I've actually met him. He's a good guy. Um, and uh, they're going to be constantly inundated with, you know, hundreds of thousands of emails every day asking people to review stuff. Um, so you're probably not going to have much luck on the left end of the list. And when you get down to Mr. 10,000, you're going to be starting to have more luck maybe with their response, but their response is going to have less uh, value, let's say. They're probably going to have less fans and so on and so forth. Um, so what happens is when you, you find one of these people, uh, you can go through the hard, long, painful process of you know, clicking on each of their profiles and checking to see if they review what you're selling. Uh, so again, bearing in mind, I'm trying to sell, like I said, my first book, Brain Eater Jones, Horror Mystery. Uh, let's say I've, I've started to go through of the list and I come across uh, this number almost 3,000, uh, The Bookie Monster, which is actually my good friend, uh, Shana Festa. I'm not outing her. her. Her name's right here on her contact. Uh, so Shana Festa, a.k.a. The Bookie Monster, has a little About Me contact and interest, and here she says, I review horror books. So that's, that's perfect. She's actually filled out this information here, and I see that her, the last couple of things she's reviewed have all been horror novels, so she's probably a really good person to hit up here. Um, and she has the link to her email and the link to her blog, so I have a way to get in touch with her. I have a way to fill out, you know, all the stuff in the spreadsheet. So, like I said, you can do that the long, hard way. 
Uh, let's take a little bit of life hack and think about a faster way to do this. So one thing you can do is you can look up a book that is similar to yours. So what I've done here is I've pulled up the book of another friend. Um, I apologize if I butcher your name, Rachel. I think it's Rachel Alks. And we have here 100 Days in Deadland, which is a similar comedic um, zombie horror book that if you scroll down here to the categories that it's under, it's going to be in a lot of the same categories as mine is, uh, you know, dystopian, post-apocalyptic, science fiction, and so on and so forth. So the reason why I chose Rachel's book is because she has almost 300 reviews here. So when I click on her reviewers, I, I've got the list of reviewers right here, 300 people that potentially except for the one stars and so on and so forth, but probably these are zombie fans. So let's say that I arrange these books by, you know, newest first. Um, here's a reviewer who I'm not familiar with named Mary Lee. So let's say I click on her Amazon profile, which is right there. Uh, so here's Mary Lee. And that's great, and it looks like she reviews, you know, horror, last couple things she's done has been apocalypse and that kind of stuff. However, um, she does not have any contact info, and it doesn't look like she lists any interests or anything like that. So really, even though Mary might be a great fit for me, even though she might be someone that I want to solicit for a review, I can't get in touch with her. So that's, that's no good. Uh, however, let's take a look at the next one. Here we have uh, Underground Book Reviews, who's also someone I'm not familiar with. These are just purely people from Rachel's book. Uh, so I bring up Underground Book Reviews. Again, he's or she has been reviewing zombie and apocalyptic books, so that's probably good. Come down here. Oh, he's got a link to his email. He's got a link to his blog. He's an online magazine. You know, it, it looks like this is going to be a good person to solicit for reviews. Okay. So that's how you can get – you can find reviewers – the hard way, um, but fairly comprehensive using the top reviewers list, uh, or you can find them the somewhat easy way by you know using comp titles with lots of reviews. So that's how you can find Amazon reviewers. The other method for finding reviewers is going to be to uh, just Google. And what I recommend that you do, and, and, you know, there's lots of ways to do this. Your mileage may vary and so on and so forth. What I recommend you do is you query your genre, or maybe a key term if it's broad enough, but you query your genre plus review policy. And the reason that I suggest this, so here we've done horror plus review policy. The reason I suggest this is because if a blog has a review policy, that tells you that they're taking reviews, that's telling you what they want, and that's telling you how to contact them. So a lot of times, unfortunately, you'll find a great blog. If they don't have a review policy, you may have no way to contact them, or you may not know what they want. And some bloggers, frankly, don't want you contacting them. They just want to review what they want to review, and they don't want, you know, random authors like you and me stalking them and, and finding them. So if they have a review policy, that means they're open to being solicited for reviews. So I feel like this is a good place to start. Then you can switch up what this word is. So I would do horror plus review policy. Um, I might also do detective. I might also do zombie. I'm on, you know, There's any number of things I can do with Brain Eater Jones. So here we've come up with a couple of great blogs, Ginger Nuts of Horror, Horror After Dark. I, I know all these people. These are all great people to query. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Horror After Dark, which is another good friend of mine, Nikki Howard. So you see here where I, I said go ahead and click on her review policy. And, uh, you know, you don't have to search around. It's somewhere under here. It's under Contact Us Review. Okay, there, Review Policy. Um, if they don't have a review policy, you're going to find it sometimes under Contact Us, sometimes under About Us, sometimes just, I don't know, you, sometimes you just have to search around. It's a pain in the neck. Uh, Nikki, thankfully, has given us a nice review policy here. 
She says we accept horror, bizarro, and so on and so forth, so they're good. Um, she prefers uh, Don Moby, okay? And she actually has a submission form. So uh, this is another great thing that, that some of the bigger blogs will have is a submission form where all you have to do is you just type in your stuff, or they'll, they'll ask you everything that you want, links, you can even upload your book sometimes directly to them, submit, and you're good to go. So, uh, you know, then I would go in here and I would fill out my spreadsheet. So I would say, okay, Nikki Howard, I submitted it via submission form, contact source, par after dark. Her after dark .com. She wanted a Moby. I contacted her 23 October. That's the date you can see in real time. And uh, then we'll fill all the rest of this out when and if Nikki comes through. So uh, now we've seen how you take care of all that stuff with the submission form. So now we get into the big question of what if they don't have a submission form? Or what if they don't have all this information where they tell you what you're asking for? So, okay, some folks are just going to say, okay, hey, just email me your info. And sometimes it'll be nothing more than that. It'll be like, here's my email. Let me know if you have something you want me to review. So what I recommend that you do, and uh, again, this is just what has worked for me. So, you know, you may want to switch it up. Um, I have a format that I use. So what you're going to do is you're going to pop open your email browser, and I suggest you use this format, and, and I'll tell you why. So uh, well, let's just go through it. I say, dear first name. I used to say dear Mr. or Miss, but sometimes you get in stuff where the, the person's name is like Taylor or something, and you're, you're not sure what gender they are. And some people think that's a little bit too formal anyway. So, okay. So I would say, you know, dear Nikki, my... You include your genre right up front, your title. If you have a publisher, I'd go ahead and, and lead with that because a lot of folks are, for good or for ill, they're not really interested in working with self-published people. Now, if their review policy says specifically, I do not accept you know, self-published people, well, you know what? Don't bother them if you are. So what I recommend you do is you say, I was published by my publisher, if you don't have a publisher, I would just leave that out. And you just say, my, my horror novel, Brain Eater Jones, was recently published, and I thought you might enjoy it. Uh, then you say what it's about. If you think you're interested in reviewing it for your website, and the reason why I suggest this is because it shows that at least you know their name, you know their website, you've looked at their review policy, you're not just sending them a generic... Uh, you know, frankly, crap email. Then you say, uh, I'll be happy to send you or have my publisher send you a courtesy copy. Now, if they've marked down in their policy what they want, so like Nikki wants Mobies, I would just say, uh, I'll be happy to send you, uh, you know, a Kindle format. And uh, the reason why I include my publisher will send, uh, sometimes your publisher is going to want to take care of this on, on their end. Sometimes they're going to want to send you copies of the document to email and you take care of it yourself. So that's just depending on what your publisher says. And of course, if you're self-published, it's going to be coming from you either way. Uh, you do your closing, your name. And then whatever you normally put at the end, which may be generic links and that kind of thing, I would just put a link to the book. So this way um, you, you give them a little bit of a taste. They can easily click on there. They can go and see more information if they want. So when I fill it out in this case, I'm saying, Dear Nikki, my horror novel, Brainer Jones, was recently published by Rap. I thought you might enjoy it. Story of a zombie with amnesia. And he sets out murder, solves on murder. If you think you might be interested in reviewing it for Horror After Dark, so here, twice she knows that I've actually looked her up, I'd be happy to have my publisher send you a courtesy Moby copy. So here's at least three places where I've shown that I've done a little bit of research. You know, okay, I don't know her personally, but I've taken the trouble to look her up and find out a little bit about her. 
thank you for your time very respectfully and then here's the link to the actual book this is not the Kozanewski page this is not this is the actual brain eater Jones page okay and another thing I would recommend is if you do actually read their site uh, or you know if you, the reason you're going there is because uh, you saw a similar review uh, bloggers like to know that their things are being read so I will sometimes also include a sentence like I very much enjoyed your review of 100 days in deadland by my colleague Rachel Oaks um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't you know bump this up too much uh, Rachel you know is a colleague if they're a good friend, say they're a good friend. If there's someone you know, just say there's someone you know. Don't I would say don't try to press this too hard and don't tack it onto every email. I would just say if there is a reason that you went to their site in particular, you can put that up front. And again, so here's four places that I'm showing. I said I know her name, I read one of her reviews, I know the name of her website, I know what her preference is. For you know, copy. Here's four ways that I've personalized the letter without doing anything more than just a little bit of basic research. So I'd say you pop this into your your email server, you send it out to them, you update your spreadsheet, you wait for a response. When they respond, you get back to them. Oh, one thing I should point out: if they have, if they request a bunch of things here in their review policy okay uh, you, what you should do is like if they're requesting you know the publisher publication date page link if they're requesting things like this in your review policy there's an easy way to handle that I would say delete the elevator pitch okay so all you're saying is hey I have a novel if you'd like to take a look I'd be happy to send it to you and I included all the information from your submission guidelines below. Then you go down here and you go title, synopsis, publisher, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's your basic format for your email. I think that's how you're going to get the most response. It's short, it's sweet, it's painless. Like I said, you do what works for you, and uh, I think that's kind of the basics of how to solicit queries. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time.